Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in Thursday of the third week in ordinary time. Our text today is taken from Mark chapter 4, verse 21 to 25. I, I entitled today's teaching, A Lesson in Mathematics. So let me read the text first. He said to them, Is a lamp brought to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, um, chapter 4, my dear friends, of the Gospel of Mark introduces us to four parables that Jesus narrated. Now, since we celebrated yesterday the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, the lectionary skipped the first of the four parables and we are given to understand that uh, the first of the four parables is the key parable for understanding all the other parables because if you read chapter 4 uh, verse 13 he says and he said to them do you not understand this parable then how will you understand all the other parables so may I request you to please read chapter 4 verses 1 to 20 now uh, in Mark chapter 4 verse 21 to 25 we have two short parables of Jesus one which is a matter of plain common sense and the other a bit uh, obscure in its meaning. Now, when the word parable is used, we normally think of long stories spanning several verses like the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4 verse 1 to 9. It's a rather long one. Uh, or we think of uh, the very famous parable of the prodigal son uh, taken from Luke chapter 15. Uh, several parables in Luke chapter 15, the lost coin, the lost sheep, the lost son. So we think of those parables. But as we know, a parable is literally, and this is the definition of a parable, something thrown beside something else. Something thrown beside something else. It's a comparison of something earthly with something spiritual. So they can be long narratives or they can be very short, pithy comparisons of a verse or two. Now, today's text illustrates how Jesus could use the shortest of the little comparisons to illustrate very deep spiritual truths. Both the parables in today's Gospel are two verses long and they are separated by a warning in the middle. Now, in the Old Testament, so taking the first one, the first of the parables, if you look at it, verses 21 and 22, in the Old Testament, a lamp uh, is a metaphor for three things. When you spoke of a lamp, you thought of the God, you thought of the Messiah, or you thought of the Torah. The Torah is the first five books of the Bible for the Jews. For us, we call it the Pentateuch. So, a lamp would be associated with God, with, with the Messiah, or with Torah. Now, the original Greek text uh, that remember that the New Testament was written in Greek, the original Greek text does not read as a lamp, but it reads as the lamp. He said to them, the lamp brought into to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not under the lampstand. Now, in short, Jesus is revealing his identity. He's revealing his mission in this text indicating that the lamp is not just a lamp but it refers to himself so he the messiah is brought in to be put not under a bushel not under a basket not under the bed but jesus is to be put on the lampstand okay that's the first thing we learn now putting all this together jesus is saying does the lamp that is he come to be put therefore under a measuring bowl would you put me under a bed should you not put me up on a lampstand Jesus wants his followers to let his light his teaching shine 
yeah not just a light burning or a light shining but his light must shine for the whole world so jesus the light is not um, a searchlight to expose he is not a searchlight to shame or embarrass others some you know have mistakenly interpreted uh, verse 22 for there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed nor anything secret except to come to the light so many people have interpreted verse 22 as referring to the sins of human uh, human beings uh, and what is going to be revealed on judgment day everything we have ever done will come to light on judgment day now while this may be true uh, in the sense that that's what uh, the final judgment is all about while this may be true it is not the correct interpretation within this context so if sins being exposed is not what jesus was talking about here then what is jesus talking about uh, in this text look at verse 22 verse 22 begins with the word for for there is nothing for indicating that verse 22 is a continuation or it's an elaboration of the previous verse verse 21 concerning the eventual revelation of Christ's divinity remember verse 21 we are talking about Jesus the light okay now we have seen in mark's gospel as in the case you'll remember of the leper in chapter 1 we have seen that Jesus concealed his identity as god for a time the leper was told please do not go and talk about this uh, so uh, we have seen that he, jesus has concealed his identity as god for this time now rather than immediately boldly declare he was god uh, and he would have got himself killed uh, before he begins his ministry what he does is he establishes his uniqueness through his healings in the gospel of mark through his immediate and absolute command of demons and he establishes authority among uh, through his amazing teachings so when jesus says for there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed nor is anything secret except to come to light he is speaking of himself that which was hidden about him even from his most ardent disciples up to this point that is the matter of his divinity and his mission Uh, to go to the cross and pay the penalty for sin this would eventually be revealed so that it should then all come to light now when jesus the light of truth shines all is understood and all is forgiven you know one has no need to hide nor does one need to choose to stay in the dark to be indifferent or to be hostile so the gospel reading these two verses tells us also tells us that good news therefore is to be shared jesus the lamp needs to be shared jesus must be spoken about you know uh, pope francis is speaking to people who were concerned about the shortage of priests spoke uh, he spoke about people who lived authentically christian lives as being the real preachers of the good news in today's world yeah so each one of us has to reflect the light of jesus christ he is the the lamp he is the true light we have to reflect that in our daily um, lives now there is a warning remember i said there are two parables uh, 21 22 and then uh, there is a warning sandwiched in between before we go to the next parable so what is that uh, warning uh, that warning in verse 23 begins with the word um, let me see now if i've got that right let anyone who has ears so listen that's what it says let any one who has ears to hear listen so what jesus is saying is pay attention jesus knows that it is easy for people to become inattentive even to the very things that bring them life you see in listening in hearing and following jesus we grow in familiarity with his voice and then we begin to hear more of what he's saying so that's the warning in between now let's look at the second parable and the second part of this parable which is verse 25 now this verse is a little obscure let me read it first for you so it says for to those who have more will be given and from those who have nothing even what they have will be taken away now when we read it it seems like a paradoxical world where 
the wealthy keep accumulating riches and the poor are consistently deprived for no fault of theirs. Now, verse 24, which is part of this parable with verse 25, was not really an original saying of Jesus. It was an old Hebrew proverb which was translated into the Greek and then translated into English. So, something gets lost in the translation. The literal translation is this. In whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you and will be added to you. Basically, this verse means that what you put in, you get out plus more, plus more. But remember that in today's text, Jesus is also talking about himself. He was saying that the measure you put into seeking Jesus, Jesus will seek you in return and reward you more in return. So understanding this concept then makes verse 25 clear. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. What Jesus means is that the person who seeks to gain spiritual insight into what he is saying, will have that insight increased by exposure to his parables. Whereas those uh, who do not listen to Jesus will end up in spiritual ignorance. What one gets out of Jesus' teaching, therefore, would depend on the degree of their commitment to hear it and listen with open hearts and minds. Now, as with Jesus' warning to the scribes that we, we saw in chapter 4, verse 11, uh, the statement not only concerns addition to those who hear, but is also a warning of subtraction to those who will not hear. Whoever listens to him, to him more shall be given. Whoever does not listen to Jesus, from him, whatever spiritual good he has, will be taken away from him. Now, I have done a teaching on chapter 4, um, verses 1 to verse 20. You'll find it in the description box. The link will be there in the description box. Also, for those of you who, are, who have asked me to send uh, the text version of what I'm teaching you, uh, that also has, I've been putting now all the additional text. Remember that uh, this is the second time I'm going through the Gospel of Mark with you. So the first time I did a very exegetical way of dealing with it, like I've done today. Uh, the second time round, I've also been giving you a lot of reflections, a lot of thought, something for you to color, uh, to work on. I want to also say that um, uh, some of you might be aware already that we've announced um, our parish retreat to Igatpuri on the 24th, 25th and 26th of February. That's Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, we have opened out this retreat now to uh, non-parishioners of St. Stephen's. Um, we are taking just a limited number of people. So if you're interested, please get in touch with me before the 31st because that would be a cutoff date, uh, not for the numbers, but for us to help you with your train ticket bookings. That's number one I want to announce. Number two, what I want to announce is also a reminder to many of you who would like to take part in the missions that will be conducted by Father Michael Payapali from Colombo. Many of you have heard of him. He's an excellent priest and an excellent preacher, a uh, very holy man of God. So he'll be here at St. Stephen's Church uh, from the 31st of March, which is a Friday. Uh, the, the, the missions will begin in the afternoon from 1 o'clock and will end at about 8 o'clock on Friday. And then on the 1st and 2nd of April, that's a Saturday and Sunday, we will begin earlier in the day, uh, roughly at about 9 o'clock, maybe on Saturday, and on Sunday we'll begin at 8.30 because it will be Palm, Palm Sunday. That will be the day Bishop Barthol will also be celebrating the uh, Mass uh, on the last day of the missions. Now, uh, we are asking you to register so that we get a sense of, uh, you know, the food, etc. that we need to take care of. Uh, we are making this, this mission open. We are offering this free of charge. So if you feel, uh, I can just tell you that if we have a thousand people, into uh, 100 rupees a simple meal that's one lakh a day only for the meal yeah uh, into three days into tea into putting up mandaps into putting up screens into uh, the air tickets for father the the uh, the hospitality for the uh, uh, the the praise and worship group so if any of you would like to help us out with this um, mission please let me know uh, financially please get in touch with me my numbers are always on the screen and to those of you who continue to 
make an offering towards the Love Joy Hope Foundation for Children, I want to say thank you. Um, this week I am actually in Goa, so I have recorded many of these teachings for you and uh, I will be back in Mumbai on the 2nd of February. God bless you, have a great Republic Day, please pray for our nation today and uh, continue to pray for me. I will see you tomorrow, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel if you are new to this channel. Share this video with your friends. God bless you everybody.